Good morning, everyone. Dr. Minasri here. Today, we are going to talk about a crucial point of care ultrasound, scale that is rapidly becoming a standard of care, gastric ultrasound. Our objective is simple. Why we use it, how to do it, and most importantly, how to interpret the finding to make safer anesthetic decision. We start by why. Why should we add this to our pre-op checklist? The answer is risk stratification. We use gastric pocus primarily in three scenarios. First, and uh, most commonly, in patients with uncertain fasting status. Think of trauma, pediatric or confused patients. Second, for growing number of patients on GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide. So new ASA guidelines specifically recommend considering gastric ultrasound for these patients, as these medications significantly delay gastric emptying, even with standard fasting. Third, in high-risk situation, like emergency surgery, where aspiration risk is, is elevated. So how do we do it? The technique is straightforward and reproducible. We use a curvilinear low-frequency probe, 2 to 5 MHz, to get the depth we need. So we place the probe in sagittal or longitudinal orientation over the epigastrum, using the liver and the great vessels like the aorta as our acoustic windows, what we call the, the vascular see-through view. The main structure we focus on is the gastric antrum, located just below the liver. The protocol involves scanning in two positions, first supine for a quick screening, then if needed, right lateral decubitus. This allows fluid to settle in the antrum, making it easier to visualize and quantify. This br brings us to the core of the exam, interpretation. We use a simple three-grade system. Grade zero A is, what, is what we want to see. The antrum is empty, appearing as a bull's eye or a target sign, a small, flat, layered structure. This means the stomach is empty. Our decision is to proceed safely with, with the planet anesthetic. Grade one suggests a small volume of clear fluid. We only see it after we roll the patient into the RLD position. If the calculated volume is less than 1.5 milliliter per kg, we classify this as low risk. Here, the decision is to consider rapid sequence induction, depending on the clinical context. Grade two, high risk. High risk means either fluid visible in the supine position, indicating a large volume, or solid content. Solid content has a characteristic frosted glass or heterogeneous appearance. In this case, rapid sequence is required. Finally, let's talk about clinical integration. This isn't just an academic exercise. We use this tool for risk stratification. We quantify why a patient is at aspiration risk, guide airway strategy, grade determines if standard induction is safe or if rapid sequence is needed. We can also modify anesthetic plan, adjusting the timing, the technique, or preparing for a difficult airway. The ultimate goal is to prevent pulmonary aspiration and keep patients safe. Thank you.